Welcome back, Beginning Watercolor. It's Brad here, and today we're going to talk really quickly about paper. Uh, this is not going to be a long video about paper. Uh, there's so much to talk about it, and I don't want to bore you because we've got lots of information, and we've only got eight weeks. So uh, this is the paper that we're using in class, which you already know. We've talked a little bit about it in other videos. It's a 140-pound paper. This is a, We're using the 9 by 12 blocks. Um, but just a couple things about this and about paper in general that you should know. What it's when you see, um, I just put this down. I should probably lift, keep it back up. Uh, when you see like this on there, it says 140 pounds. Uh, you're probably wondering, this doesn't feel like 140 pounds. It feels lighter. Um, well, that's okay. There's a way that they they weigh paper, and it's it's through reams. And so basically, they just do these reams of paper, and it's like 100 or 480 sheets of paper, and that determines the weight. So however much does that weigh, you know, it says, in this case, this the thickness of this paper, 100, uh, or 480 sheets of it equals like 140 pounds, okay? So that's how they determine the weight. That's all that is. So basically the, the heavier the weight, I mean, the thicker that paper is gonna be. And which is important because um, if you have, uh, you know, they vary in, in, uh, in weights, watercolor paper. It's all over, the, it's all across the board. A typical, what you'd find um, in the stores is, a, is the 140 pound. It's kind of a medium to light paper. Um, if you are using this or a lighter, you need to stretch it if it's not on a watercolor block. So uh, you're probably wondering, what is stretching? Well, uh, when you get paper wet, if you've never done watercolor before, you, you don't, you're not familiar with uh, the things that's going to start buckling pretty soon if you hit it, if it gets uh, wet, your paper, if it gets wet. So this is watercolor paper too. Uh, this is a different type, but you can kind of see. Oh, look, yeah, if I even get it right, you can see like the watermark in there. See, you kind of see through it. Okay. Um, but it, if this, for this kind of paper like this, you need to stretch this. This is, I think it's 140 pound paper too. Maybe it's a little thicker. It feels, I don't know what it is, but it's somewhere around there. It's not like a 300 pound paper. And so I do know that you need to stretch it because I've done work on it before, whatever weight it is, and it buckles. It buckles a lot. Um, so you need to stretch it. And basically what you would do in that process is you need to soak it like in a tub, and then you need to uh, pull it out and let it, uh, let it completely dry, like will drip dry. So you get like all the excess water off of it, let it drip. Then you're gonna um, put it down on a board. I have, I have a watercolor board, but I'm not gonna bring it up. Basically a big, big board. And you're gonna um, tape it down using gum strip or like a brown paper tape. You can buy it in the art stores, um, but you, you wanna use that. You don't wanna use masking tape. I've tried masking tape and um, I've, some of sometimes it works, but most of the time not very well. I don't recommend it. Uh, use the the brown uh, paper tape or the they call it gum strip. Just ask for it in the store. They should know what you're talking about. Call it the watercolor tape for taping down watercolor. If they don't know what you're talking about, then you already know more than they do. Okay, so um, don't ask them any more questions except for maybe <laughs> where where their manager is or something. I don't know, but. Um, that's the kind of tape you're going to want to use to, to tape it down. And then even then, um, you might want to put like tacks in the corners um, just to keep it from, from moving around. And then once it's tacked down there and it's dry, um, it, should, it should stay pretty, pretty flat. It may buckle a little bit, but it will it'll still lay uh, flat again. Um, but you do need to, to do that if you're going to um, stretch your own. Now, for this class, and when, we, when I teach it up at, up at school, um, I don't like to deal with this because it's it just takes like a couple hours just to do the stretching process or like you have to prepare it ahead of time and uh, with time being limited it's just easier so much easier just to if you have a block the stretching process then all that stuff that I just uh, talked about you could skip right over and you can just start painting right away so uh, just a couple other quick things that you might need to know hopefully you're still watching it uh, so um, there's hot press and cold press paper and I will probably do some demos in the class using both just so you can uh, see that 
Again, I'm going to try to use, for the most part, I'm going to use the same materials that you guys are going to use. But I did a demo just the other night, or a few nights ago, um, getting prepared for your non-representational painting. And so I, I did I did one of those. And this is hot press. And so you can kind of see like how, well, maybe not. It's smooth paper. It's really ultra smooth. And it's, it's really nice. Whereas this one, this is a demo I, I did. It's a preview of things to come here. This, this um, is a cold, so this is hot press, this is cold press. And you might be able to see like the tooth of it, I don't know. But you can see like the, the tooth, it actually has, it kind of goes, the surface of it, it's kind of like bumpy. Whereas the surface of this one is like super smooth. All right, so that's the difference between hot press and cold press. And your the paint, and when you, you um, work on it, they, it's a noticeable difference and so it just it kind of depends on your style and depends on what what you like wanted what you want to do um just depending on what kind of paper you like um the the cold press i used on there is a little bit more pronounced than the cold press that we are using here this is a cold press paper um so you can see there's uh, there's see there's a bit of a tooth there if that was hot press it would be much more smooth okay um One's not better than the other. It just depends on, on your preference and what you like. So um, if you're doing a lot of super detailed work, um, you know, the hot press is, is really nice because it, it, it doesn't have all the, the bumps in there. Um, if you want to be a little bit more loose and free and expressive, um, the cold press is nice. And it, um, But anyway, it's personal preference. So you use what you like to use. Um, I think that's just about it in terms of paper. Hopefully you guys have found this uh, this interesting or, or helpful. So next time when you go to the store, when you're when you, because there's going to be so many options when you go to an art store. Like, what kind of paper should I get? I recommend if you're a beginner, just just do this for a while. If you want to start stretching your paper, you know I encourage you. To, you know, everyone should try it at some point. But it's a it's another step in the process and it's more to work on. And I just think for most beginners, just stick to these these blocks. I mean, if it doesn't work out, then just cut it off. Um, and yeah, you really do need to, if it's like 140 pounds or less, you need to stretch it. So don't get like just those pads of paper and just start like trying to paint on them in the, without stretching it. They'll just buckle all over if it's wet at all. If you work very dry, it might not do it so much, but um, you, you, you do need to stretch it. Um, if you're working on like a 300 pound paper, you don't need to stretch that probably at all. And that's what's the beauty of using them. You just put it right down there and just start working on it. No stretching. And that is a special treat. But that paper is expensive. And so just, it's, it, unless you've done a lot of painting, it can be real nerve wracking. I still get a little tense. Like, this is an $8 sheet of paper. Kind of nervous about starting out. Like, the ones where I'm like, oh, who cares? It's just a pretty cheap endeavor. But uh, that's another good point, too. It just uh, kind of, one last thing you can't be too afraid uh, especially in watercolor or just art in general about wasting some materials it's going to happen and you just got to you just got to do it because if you play it safe all the time you're just gonna that's where you waste paper that's when you waste material so you gotta just you just gotta go for it all right let's uh let that be a word of encouragement before before we take off so go for it have fun and uh if you guys want to see me do an actual stretching of some some watercolor paper where I, I, I use the brown paper tape and uh, the gum strip and tape it down and you see the whole mess. I will do that, but I need to see a lot of uh, requests for that before I, I do that right now, right now. So anyway, take care and we'll, we'll see you. All right. Bye. Hey guys, one last thing. Um, you'd think like in a video about paper, I would tell you, um, how to get the paper, the top sheet off of your watercolor block after you're done painting it. Well, I didn't do that here because there's another video elsewhere. And so if you're if you're in my class, look in the, the module online and you will uh, it'll be in there. Um, if you're just on the internet searching around, uh, I do have another video on that. So just search for that. Search how to remove the, the um, your paper uh, from your watercolor block and check that out. And uh, it's pretty easy. And if you ever get stuck, you can always just look at the back of the watercolor block itself and it will tell you how to do it. 
Anyway, take care.